Talk to me about some, I know I said a lot there. I'm too fired up. Listen, this is supposed to be your show, but forgive me if I jump in here and try to preach a little, because dude, I get, oh, when you talk, good. I get all fired up, man. And I got to remember, this is not my interview. This is your interview. So let's get back to it. What are some of the big hindrances to generational curses? And why in the world are churches and pastors not talking about this? Okay, I think the biggest, and I talk about this in, actually, I open up the first chapter of our book, talking about, or rather demystifying the whole idea of the topic of generational curses. The biggest hindrance that I have seen um, is what I call misinformation. Misinformation mm. is false or incorrect information that is spread intentionally or unintentionally. Of all the enemies to the revelation of generational curses, I believe that misinformation reigns as its arch nemesis. And there is more misinformation out there in the body of Christ about generational curses than there is anti-curses propaganda. I believe it's misinformation information and um it's found it, without giving too much away because you really got to go buy the book and the information is linked and pinned in the comment make sure you purchase it and pre-order it tonight and just to throw this in there we're almost at 100k we're about 50 subs away so those of Come you that are there if Facebook, you want to get the Facebook. free ebook copy if you want to get the free ebook copy of the secrets to deliverance make sure you go follow me on Facebook for the free book giveaway just for 300 subs to pull us over the hundred uh the, the hundred k okay so here is some of and i would say maybe one or one or two is this galatians chapter 3 verse verse 13 where it says jesus became the curse that is by far the number one uh use or narrative that people who haven't dug deeper into this topic of generational curses that believe that a Christian can't have uh, a generational curse. And it's because they've been misinformed that the word become or became means to annihilate. That's how it's taught in biblical seminary, and I'm a biblical sem seminary graduate. That's how it's taught in many churches, and that's what I have heard throughout the years as I've been saved, now going on 31 years in the gospel. By far, I've heard this the number one, there's no such thing as generational curses. Jesus became the curse. That means there's no more curses. Then we got a problem, Houston, because the same, the same apostle, or mm. rather the same apostles in the New Testament that said Jesus uh, became the curse, also in another epistle said Jesus became sin. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So if the word became implies no longer existing because he became it he embodied it then what did paul mean if it's the same greek word he became sin who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god so Come it on. became means no longer exists and there's no longer curses then why do you still sin wow if he became sin because we've already said this three times in the program, is the efficacy of Christ's work on the cross has broken the power of sin, not the presence of sin. And if you sit here and say, just try to win an argument, well, then I don't no longer sin. Then the apostle John condemns you and says in 1 John chapter one, if any Christian says they have not sinned and doesn't sin you are a liar and mm. the truth is not in you now here's what's crazy about this isaiah first john chapter one is not written to unbelievers you know how i know it's not written to unbelievers because he opens the epistle saying dear children he says dear children wow. he says god dwells in the light and in him there is no variables and no shadow of turning and he said as a matter of fact if you have fellowship with him and walk in darkness you lie and then he goes on into saying uh, the idea of Christians still sinning. So I think the number one uh, arch nemesis of, the, of understanding generational curses, post-ascension, present-day dispensation of the Holy Spirit, a.k.a. the church, church age, is misinformation. And this is why I Good. wrote this book. The book that I wrote, The Secrets to Generational Curses, is, if I could just be a little bit nippy with it, I debunk those who try to debunk 
Generational <laughs> curses. Why? Because I want you to get set free. And again, and I hate that we have to keep repeating this. No one is taking away from the supremacy of scripture. No one is taking away from the supremacy of the efficacy of the cross. No one is taking away from the supremacy of understanding, of, taking, of adding to the gospel. No one is doing that. What we're doing is providing a thorough presentation so that you can become full gospel and get set free from every generational curse that is active in your life. That's so good. It's like when people say, oh, you guys do deliverance and you diminish the cross by casting out demons. The cross is enough. I'm like, no, we cast out demons because of the cross, because of the power of the cross. We're not diminishing it. We're actually doing it because Jesus came and exercised authority over the devil and gives us power. Pra guys, praise the Lord that we have power over these curses now. Praise the Lord that we don't have to live in this perpetual cycle. God, is anybody in the chat tired of the same cycle of w sinning and then getting free and then sinning and then getting free and then pastor saying, you're always gonna be this way. You're always gonna struggle financially. You're always gonna have deaths in the family randomly. You're always gonna have these issues and uh, miscarriage is just gonna run in your family. No, in Jesus name, there is power to break the curse. In Jesus name, there is power to be delivered from that spirit of barrenness that's been on your womb. In Jesus name, there's power to break the curse of barrenness tonight. In Jesus name. So get out of here with that whole, oh, you guys think Jesus is weak. The only one that thinks Jesus is weak is all these cessationists out here that say, God can't work through people anymore. Miracles aren't happening through people. The power of God's not happening. It's just in the book of Acts and it's no longer. And you know what's crazy? They believe that the devil works through people, but they don't believe that God works through people. Preach. And I posted that and I had one of the most famous, I won't mention his name. I don't want to put him on blast. He's probably watching. One of the most fa famous cessationists on YouTube message me and say, actually, you have a good point there. Because they always say the devil's working in uh, what? Billie, I Billie Eilish or Bill Eilish. I don't even know her name. The devil's working in Miley Cyrus and Beyonce. And then they go and the next sentence they say, Oh, but God isn't working through people anymore. That was just for the book Acts. I'm like, so the devil gets to have all the fun working through people, but God can't work through people. So get out of that Come with on. that lame cessationism. If your church teaches the gifts aren't for today, you need to tell that church you're not for today and go find a new church. Okay, talk to me. I'm sorry, dude. I'm, you get me all, you get me in trouble, bro. You get me all fired up when you come on here. 